Hey everyone, Robert Nixon here with the Anti-Social Rewind. I'm here with Sean Lafleur, sales manager at North Island Nissan. Sean, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is Sean. Obviously, as uh, as you were just told, I've worked at North Island Nissan here for five years, sales manager. It's it's a good gig, and uh, here I am chatting online with you. About <laughs> what we'll find out. We're, yeah, we're gonna ask him a couple questions here. Some all surprises, no. <laughs> So you're currently the sales manager here at North Island Nissan. Yeah. How long have you been? You've been with Nissan. You said five years. I right? cut you off. Yeah, five yeah. five years of that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you beat me to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is your biggest accomplishment uh, in your career? If you have you reached your biggest accomplishment so far, and if so, what was it? Or okay, I, well, I, I definitely <laughs> would say I haven't reached my biggest accomplishment. And probably if you ask me in ten years, I'll say the same thing because uh, I just like doing new stuff. But um, I mean, yes, last year at the store we won. Uh, Gold for sales management as a team. We won national award of excellence and a global award of excellence. So nice. it's kind of just a big package that celebrates uh, achievement in sales and customer service. So and that's with other Nissans or all car dealerships? That's Nissan specifically. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. But it, it's a big award and it's the first time the store won it. So it's kind of just the culmination of all the hard work everybody here has put in. So yeah, that's, yeah, awesome. uh, that's probably our most recent biggest accomplishment. Good yeah. teamwork. Absolutely. Cool. Anything else that you want to accomplish that you can see down the road? <sighs> Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I can kind of tend to just work hard at whatever opportunities are in front of me. It's not, uh, I don't know if I've got a big 10 year plan for you, but uh, I'm going to keep yeah. working hard in this industry and see where that takes me. Awesome. Get her done. Is there anything you wish you had known uh, when you first started out? Um, yeah. And you know what? It's one of those things I kind of knew. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, backing up. You started in sales, right? I did. Like being yeah. a salesperson. Yeah. Five years ago, I started as a salesperson. I was yeah. on the floor for a year and then transitioned to the manager position. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, starting out, I kind of knew how important it was uh, to communicate with people what you're doing, but didn't really take it and run with it. So for example, social media, I, I remember a few times when I was new, uh, friends or family, you know, might, you know, for example, buy a car elsewhere that you could have got them, probably got them a better deal. And for a second you go, oh, that hurts. But like, whose fault is that really? That's, you know, that's mine for not getting out there and letting people know that's what I'm doing. So not showing them the value that they needed or, or, or that you were or, or doing maybe it. even communicating that that's what I'm doing. Some people didn't even know that for the first year that I was doing it. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah that's if, huge I, if, if sure. I could go back and, and shake myself at the time, I would say get in front of people more, you know, do it authentically and, and not, not, uh, not to the point of irritation, but make sure people, people know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, get your yeah. face out there, which is huge for sure. Yeah. Same with real estate, right? Yeah. So with that said, you're going to do something in February, right? What's that? Is that going to help get you out there? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> are, we allowed, are we allowed to talk about it? Well, we can't. We can't. There's one thing we can't. I can. I, we can talk about the social media yeah, aspect, just, but not just, what the just big thing is yet. We'll, we'll do another one. <laughs> so I, I did a live video with uh, Ben Coyle at Island Al. Shout out if he's around uh, last week, and he. I let him know that I'm really trying to push myself to get out a little bit more this way, and he's challenged me to do 29 days of February every day on a live video. So you'll be seeing that. Hopefully, I come up with some content that's interesting, relevant, and uh, that you'll enjoy. Yeah. Awesome. Do you have any ideas for content yet? Um, I'm going to be lying if I said yes. I'm going to be hitting everybody up and soliciting. Actually, if everybody's watching right now and they've got any ideas, anything in the car industry that you might be interested, uh, I've done a little bit of real estate. We owned a restaurant for three years. Um, so anything along those kind of lines or anything, I don't know, bald guy hair tips. Uh, <laughs> give, give me a shout or post on here. I'd really love some information and some thoughts and ideas. So, yeah. Some ideas. I did a cool one with one of Ben's sales guy once in one of the Porsches he had. We'd like tour around town, oh, live cool. video and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So something like that would be cool if you got new inventory. Anything. Yeah, car sales and real estate guys in cars. <clears throat> and fancy Nissan, yeah. yeah. What makes you passionate about what you do? It's fun. It's a, It's a really fun industry. I think probably... If I were to pin down the thing that makes me the most proud, it's helping to grow people. Um, so a lot of people come into the industry uh, maybe without a little, a lot of background, um, just wanting to try something out and to watch them go from, you know, fumbling around not knowing much about cars to loving the product, loving the customers, confidently, you know, helping people get into cars they love. That's that's pretty neat for me to see. So people new to the industry, do you get a lot of salespeople that are like newer to the industry, or most of them already have experience? I absolutely prefer personally people that don't have experience because you can. You can, mold. you can mold them, but yeah. train them more. Yeah. Not not mold them, but train them to, I, I to would, do it the way you think you should, they should. Or I would learn. say, yeah, I would say there's a lot of there are a lot of people that have been in the industry for a long time that that are quite good. But I think there's also um, probably some hangover from the way things used to be that were maybe a little bit um, counterproductive to um, the transparency that I think helps move things along nowadays. So right, um, totally get that. Yeah. I uh, and then I mean, in real estate as well, it's just everything's changing so fast with social media and stuff yeah. that 
a lot of the old school things are sort of a thing in the past. They don't right? work. It just yeah, creates friction with work. customers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I like no friction. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. friction's good. <laughs> Low pressure. Um, is there anything you did during your career that you failed at, and would you do it differently now? Besides the exposure thing and getting out there more. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's probably, that could... probably the biggest thing I could point to. I mean, yeah. I, I look at somebody like, I'm going to shout out to Ben again, but he's done <clears> such a good job of... Uh, building a following and a reputation for himself that, yeah, I think that anything has. that he jumped into, he would instantly have that recognition and people would know what he's doing. Um, like it wouldn't matter because they know him so well that they would see it. Yes. Cause he's, well, he's just, he's an out there authentic dude. He doesn't, you know, I don't think he hides what he's doing. That's for sure. People, no people, people love that. So Ben's a, um, Ben's a character. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. But um, yeah, I mean not to harp on it, but I think if I could go back and change that, that's one thing I would do to kind of grow <laughs> Uh, myself a little bit more now and well I guess that's what we're working on right now getting a little bit more uncomfortable exactly. on camera exposure yeah. I so I did uh, just let the office cross I did uh, Mike Ball a, long, a while ago and he's the one that recommended you oh great yeah. but I didn't know who Sean was and then we're at the 100 men who give a damn thing yeah and happened to be talking and then I was like oh I was trying to get a hold of uh, the sales manager at Nissan and he's like oh well that's me yeah 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 <laughs> so then we connected yeah, and timing. set yeah. this up yeah uh, what's the next question <laughs> what's your favorite memory of your career ooh Oh boy, that's a tough one. <laughs> I should read the questions a little bit better. Favorite memory of my career? You don't, oh, if you don't have okay, one, no, no, I've got it. it. I've got it. So my first month in, I came in and I felt like a hot shot. I sold a lot of cars, had a lot of fun, um, was getting a lot of positive feedback from the customers and all that kind of that. And there's a bit of a phenomenon in the car business where, uh, kind of your second, third month in, you feel like you know everything, <laughs> and so maybe you listen to your managers a little bit less than you should. And that resulted in a month of me selling, I think, two cars. Um, and Matt Palsy, the, the, the gem that he is, actually put that in the newspaper. Sean 2.0 Lafleur. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, at the time, it was like, oh, that's embarrassing. But yeah. looking back on it now, it's I, I love having that tool to show salespeople when they're in their second, third month, when they're hitting those doldrums. Look, this is what it was for me. You come through it and success will follow if you just keep at it. So It, yeah. ha it yeah. happens. I assume. I'm real estate, too. Real estate's... And yep. I find like the real estate industry has its its busy times and its slow times and what the market's doing. But even as an agent, like I'm sure it's the same for you guys. You prospect, you prospect, you try to get business. You get yep. really busy and you stop prospecting. Yes, and because then you're it, one you slow show, down. And, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So when you're selling, you don't have you can't be doing as much nurturing, right? And then when you're exactly. nurturing, you're not doing as, quite as much selling. So you kind of have a bit of a balance there that can can be tough. So but. you try to balance it and be yeah. consistent, but yeah. it, it's hard for yeah. sure. I hear you. <clears throat> Is there any other profession besides the one that you currently that you are currently in that you would like to attempt? Uh, if you were to ask three years ago, I would have said restaurant. <laughs> but you sold uh, you just sold one, well, right? We, we, we did it, and it, it was quite enjoyable. My fiance Laurel and I, yeah. um, we spent three years at that, and it was great. But honestly, we're thinking kids coming up relatively soon, right? I mean, I could put any pressure on the timeline for it, but <laughs> we um, we looked at it and went, you know what? Can we do you know? cars and the bit of real estate that we're doing and the restaurant and kids and you mm -hmm. know have a happy balanced life and the answer was a pretty resounding no so uh, we kind of made mm -hmm. the decision that that was not going to be for us if, if uh, kids were in the future which they are so yeah so yeah. she ran the restaurant with you she ran the restaurant she ran uh, full on it would have sank like a <clears throat> stone if it weren't for her i i would did uh, coffee roasting and worked on the weekends and fixed stuff and a little bit of marketing. Coffee right. roasting? Yes. For yourself or for a company? No, for the restaurant. Oh, for the yeah. restaurant. Oh, yeah. You roasted and, your own and, coffee. And we supplied resorts and we supplied other restaurants and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was a breakfast and lunch place and a, and a coffee roastery. So yeah. um, it's been taken over by some new local owners that are doing a good job. And I think that they'll they'll get to carry it on and take care of our customer base because we had a lot of really lovely people in there. Yeah, that's awesome. At least it didn't shut down or anything, right? Just, no. Just no, didn't no. work for you, right? Yep. <clears throat> How much? So would have been a restaurant, but obviously that this this obviously like better than the restaurant, or made more sense than the restaurant. Both, um, yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, there's there's good things to both. It's customer facing, so there's always that service level. I learned a lot on the restaurant side of stuff that actually translates pretty well, believe it or not, to sales because it's I yeah mean, for sure nowadays it's just servicing the customer and kind of anticipating their wants and needs that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I I would say that I prefer <clears throat> this. Um, Probably largely because while it can be a pretty intensive job in terms of time uptake, um, it'll also lead to a little bit more um, stability and financial rewards for family down the road, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what I found. I was a mechanic before, so I think in sales or, well, real estate, I assume your position would be the same. Yeah. Sort of the harder you work, the, the more you get, it's whereas proportional you're not to it. just uh, yeah, exactly. always a number is what I always was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. For yeah. sure. Is there anything, uh, sorry, 
in the last 10 years, uh, how do you feel the business has changed? Um, examples of social marketing, media, yeah. um, how do you stay ahead of it all? Okay, so I would probably mention it earlier, um, but when I started, it was kind of right. I mean, I'm sure it's you probably look back at any year and say things changed crazy that year, but mm -hmm. I remember that it was still very much the old school mentality of very rigid process, very... Um, not necessarily that you're withholding information from customers, but that you kind of want to be the one in control. And it never really made sense to me because, I mean, first of all, it didn't feel great. It felt like friction. And second of all, like all that information's online. Like it's all right there. You're, if, if, if you're, you're probably doing worse than being helpful if you're not, if you don't know and present more than what the customer can find out by themselves on the internet in a five minute Google search. Totally. Show, right. show them value, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, I, yeah, I very much remember there being a bit of a transition from, you know, a bit of a stickler, okay, we need to make sure that this is exactly the car they want before we get to the pricing side of things to, okay, well, that's kind of part and parcel. People want to know both of those things at the same time, and it does mm -hmm. not hurt to answer the questions, right? Yeah, money obviously makes a difference if they, can't afford, if they can't afford it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Or it's just a question sometimes. I mean, if they're looking at a Rogue here, it's going to be pretty well the same price as the CRV across the street. If they're looking for SUVs, they, are, they already know what they're priced at, right? Yeah, They just sure. want to make sure that you're in line, so, mm, yeah. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> So backing that up a bit, so yeah, like what, so that's sort of the way it's changed, but obviously do you feel that like the social media aspect of it, oh. do you think that has changed in the last couple of years too for car sales? Because obviously people like Ben, like I didn't know Ben until probably I knew who he was maybe three years ago or something, yeah. but I've been in real estate just over four years, yeah. or almost four years. And for me, like, like social media was how I built my business, but yeah. All the old school people and a lot of people in the office had never done social media when I first started doing it, right? I think it's an but opportunity it's getting for young people. I, th I think really like, I don't know that the car <clears throat> business has necessarily changed so much due to social media, so much that people's attention are just in a different place. And I mean, I mentioned earlier- So where you get that attention. Where you find the attention. Yeah. And, and the nice thing too is that it's so frictionless. <clears throat> I mean, back in the day, you've got a newspaper, you've got a car. Okay, so you've got to either make carve time out of your day to go and visit it, or you've got to call into the store, and probably back then they'd probably just tell you you need to come in to give you the information, right? Versus now, you see it online, and you tap a button, you go, hey, does this thing have any accidents, right? I mean, it's so frictionless, it's so easy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess probably a way that it's changed it is as a, as a salesperson, you're probably expected to be on a little bit more. Um, the internet never sleeps. So you if are you're, on if, more, if you're there for at sure. 10 p.m., and you know what I mean? I mean... You could not respond to it, but then the store that does respond to it is going to get the business. And personally, it, it, uh, we kind of set things up so that all of our salespeople have access to that, uh, that obviously the information, but also to the customers when they make those inquiries. So it mm -hmm. spreads out pretty good. But if you want to be the one getting the lead and getting the customer, you're going to be the one that grabs the, uh, the, the lead or yeah. the contact information. And at 10 pe PM, people's right? expectations are different now, right? Like yeah. my old broker owner, he used to always say like, people want everything now and they can get the information now. So if you don't respond, you're... Yeah. Right, they say like three, minute, three minutes or five minutes from the internet. Probably inquiry. forget about it in ten minutes. They're on to the next. Well, exactly. Thing, right? They're yeah. scrolling Facebook and they click. Yeah. And I, I phone people that click on my Facebook ads, and sometimes they don't remember they even clicked on it. Yeah, right, yeah. And it's like, oh well, you know. No, I just I'm have a conversation. I'm of the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah, funny. totally. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. <clears throat> what can you tell me about real estate? And do you own any real estate investments? What could I tell you about real estate? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you'd be expert in that. I yeah, we we do. Uh, Laurel and I have. Uh, two properties that we own and then two that we own with partners. Um, and that's been over the last four years that we've kind of... So four that. four that are rentals? Uh, yeah. Well, so one's our primary, but it's got two suites. So it's kind of oh, a nice. triplex, yeah. 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 Um, and then a place in Camel River. It's up, down, it's suited. And then uh, another triplex in Black Creek. So. Yeah, awesome. Oh, and then another single family. But uh, yeah. yeah. So um, so joint, two joint ventures and two... Pro yeah, that's that's helpful. exactly it. Um, I mean, I've spent a lot of time listening to podcasts and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I guess probably... <laughs> One thing that surprised me was both how complicated and how simple it can be because there's a million different things you can do in real estate, but if mm -hmm. you're going to just dig down into one, the fundamentals of it can generally be pretty understood, if that makes sense. I mean, maybe you disagree. I don't know. Uh, I think so, especially from the investment perspective. Yeah. I mean, it's really just numbers, right? If you can yeah. make the numbers make sense, then yeah. the the investment can make sense. Yeah. And I think I think people's number one holdback, whether it's buying, including myself, like I've been investing in real estate for a while. I don't have a lot of properties, but... I've learned about it and it's, it's taking action, right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. I, I see it in sales too, where people, they have that sort of fear holding them back, right? Yeah. I bought my first house in 2009. It was a 40 year no down payment. 
Oh wow! And I got laid I off. Si- I got laid off six months later. Ooh. So I was like, I always tell people, if you're if you're worried about what the market's gonna do, it's usually it's always gonna go like this. But if your job's secure and you know you're gonna have need a place to live, just do it. Get her done, yeah. right? Yep. So yeah. it's yeah, I think just not letting it hold you back. I think yeah. it's important for that stuff. Well, I think even um, I mean to to that point, the most recent one that we bought, there was a gal that posted on Facebook at six in the morning, <coughs> uh, and it was something along the lines of her they've got nine rental properties and their maintenance guy's sick. So they want to just start getting rid of them and they're not in huge rush to get rid of all of them, but yeah. they had, she put her phone number on there and she said, you know, call me if you're interested. I think 10 people commented on there. Hey, I'm interested. Hey, I'm interested. No one called. I called. Well, you called. <laughs> I got one. You yeah. called. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, called. Yeah. No, I, call, I called her. I was like, oh, she's up at six. Okay. I'm all, I ha- also happened. I'm not always up at six. It was the Sunday, but I happened to be. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to call this gal yeah. and we hit it off and things went well. And now she's decided that she wants to kind of move one a year. And so we've, we've picked one up and it's been great for us. The tenants in there is fine. And yeah, you know, we'll just nurture it and take care of her and be nice. And I mean, I think there, we had flexibility in terms of closing with her and there's stuff like uh, this one that she wanted to move. She had stuff in the big shop, so she didn't want to sell it yet. And we were like, okay, well, why don't you just rent the shop from us? And she said, oh yeah, that'd be great. So yeah. So know, working with her to, put it, yeah, to totally. make it work. Yeah. yeah we yeah, made it work for sure. her. It worked well for us. And I, I just couldn't believe that I saw someone, Hey, here's an opportunity. And everybody <laughs> takes, I mean, I guess I can believe it. But everybody takes the least the level e, of the effort. least level of resistance, and then just being the guy that called made all the difference, right? And like, I don't know. I thought that was pretty incredible. So, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, I I find it interesting too. Like in sales, calling people. I've started this year. I've been doing a thing where new new people that inquire, I'll call three times in a row yep. to get them to answer, and I I feel myself pulling back a little bit, and being nervous. I used to be nervous just calling yeah. people. Right, but I think it's better to get them to answer and tell you what they're really thinking, so you can help them or not, and well, then not bug them anymore. Right? I, I think about me but with it's that hard. kind of stuff. Like, there's there's a lot of times where like I could want to talk to someone, but they've just called me when I'm in the middle of something or I'm trying to figure something out for a customer or whatever, and I'm just gonna ignore it. Right? Yeah, and I might not remember. Well, I send them a couple of texts. Well, that's, that's <laughs> a, no, I also I also that I love texts. If somebody like if if somebody's got something that could be answered with a yes or no in a text and they call me, I hate to say it, but I'm like ah, <laughs> like yeah, I got yeah. other stuff going. Just shoot me. The text you know and same thing if it's um you know i've got a guy that's helping me out with the heat he called i was tied up he texted when i was free i saw both saw what he needed got the information and then called him instead of having to have the verbal conversation take five minutes somebody to go find the answer and then right like hey so, can you call me when you got this for me sort of yeah thing. i think it was something like that so i i don't know i i, I love text personally i think that everybody's probably a little bit like that because it's it's less it's, it's less less friction it's less time less time doing. consuming yeah. i know i'll find too like i intentionally i'll hang up with people and text them to call me back if it's important we need to talk. Yeah. Because I hate I hate having to check my voicemail and then... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, big time. And then go back and call them back because it takes twice as long, right? I like being visual too, right? Because it's, I mean, somebody leaves a voicemail with numbers on it. I'm not going to remember that. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, hey, you need to get, you know, this by this length, so and so and so. I'm scrambling for a pen versus they texted at me and, okay, I'm good. Yeah. You just yeah. got to be careful of the miscommunication. Yes. Because that does happen. Oh, <laughs> the yeah. text oh, yeah. for Anything sure. that needs emotion, I think that's probably fun. I've been doing yeah. a lot of, yeah. uh, like, video. So, like, I have a app thing that's sort of for real estate it's called bomb bomb okay so it can it, it links to like a website thing and you can put it in text and stuff so okay. i'll just send someone my video text oh sweet okay. right or my video yeah. email instead of typing a big long email i'll just send them a little video about what i want to say yeah that's kind of neat to do it i funny enough we um <clears throat> i guess two years ago now there's a dog we really wanted at the sbca in victoria and we couldn't get down there and my fiance and i sent, her, sent them a selfie yeah. video We're like hey this is our house that's our dog <laughs> You know, so I don't know. People like the video content too. So that it became yeah. personal and they saw, oh, yeah, totally. saw you, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, um, it helps. But I, I found sometimes when I do something in video and it's direction, though, it's not, like you say, it's not written down if it's a number or something. So they yeah. they can't remember it or whatever. So it happens, but. are you, Do you have any more plans to buy any more real estate investments at all? Uh, we've got some other stuff coming up that I can't quite talk about yet, which we'd, we'd mentioned, but, um, once that settles down, we'll definitely be looking. Um, yeah, cool. I always keep my eye open for it. The last one that we did took a heck of a lot out of us. Uh, we bought <clears throat> a hoarder house yes. that I think we ended up taking 30,000 pounds of garbage to the dump. And, Crazy. uh, yeah, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. So I was working here and then working at the restaurant and then after hours going and peeling up carpet, which was <laughs> that's what uh, what's an animal said. urine and all that lovely stuff. Uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of work, but it's it's come out. It's beautiful now. It's a nice home for you know a couple families, and it, it was well worth it. But it was uh, it was a time sink. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and I hate to say it, but the simple fact is that no risk, no reward, and yeah. those ones that are not moving ready are the ones that are not selling, and they're the ones that there's opportunity there's opportunity, opportunity yeah. to 
um, put your sweat equity in yeah. and make it worth a lot more than it was, right? Well, that's what we found. And this one was uh, it was a little interesting too because it, just being real with you, when we found it, so that's a deal. That's great. And we did it with a, with a partner. But um, we had money for renovations. We didn't have money to buy it. So yeah. you know, we had to go, okay, so these are all the comparables. This is what we're going to be able to get it for. This is what the rental is going to cost. And then go to a private lender and say, hey, look, this is what it's going to be You know, when you fund us. And they said yes, thankfully. So then we yeah. went ahead and did it. I can tell you it was stressful. Was Taking zero down private lender? Because uh, they just still want money down. I think it was 15 or 20% down. Oh, yeah, but nice. we, between everything, we kind of scraped it together and managed to make it work, line of credit to get the renovations done. I'm not recommending doing this, by the way, unless you're stupid <laughs> or, or, or confident. Or Never whatever. recommend it, yeah. but you talk to some of the biggest investors in the world and they've probably done something to stick their neck out on the line to get it done. Yeah, right? I would bet. But yeah, so I mean, that was that was a lot of fun. I mean, I can tell you, I, I remember we, we, we everything got, you know, in place, you know, deposit down, all that good stuff. Yeah. And our, we had to do it. Uh, we were competing with an all cash offer, by the way. So Oh, no. <laughs> and you, was, and you got it. Our offer was also all cash. <laughs> Just not our cash, right? Right. right. Um, anyway, but uh, so that that went fine. But um, I remember after everything kind of closed, I went, man, I never checked if the water ran in that house. <laughs> you know, like one of that panic moments. Everything was fine, but uh, I yeah. know, sometimes you jump in with both feet and away you go. You find some yeah. surprises for yeah. sure. Yeah. It happens. Uh, do you have any advice for someone who might be interested in getting into auto sales? Yeah. Um, I think that just about anybody who likes people could do it. That's probably important. But I would also say that if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna jump in with both feet and do it with passion, it's probably not worth your time. Um, it can be mm -hmm. a lucrative and rewarding job, but you really there's you know there's late hours. There's um, you know there's lots of learning. There's lots to know. There's it's a high anxiety thing for some customers because they're spending the most money outside of buying a house, which is yeah. this guy that, uh, that they can do. Right. So, and try some to people that. Had, well, some people have had bad experiences in the past too. Right. So yeah, like, totally. it, it can be a lot, it can be a pretty big job. It can be really rewarding, but I just don't think that it's something you would want to do if you didn't want to try to do it with, with excellence, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. I think everything you do should have, like you say, both feet, but yes, that's true. You do see people that try to get into like real estate too. They'll try and do it on the side to slow. Like I, we had an Asian realtor in my old office there that she was working and she slowly got worked her way into it, started doing well that she could get rid of her other job. Right? Oh, great. Okay. But yeah. maybe that may be harder with car sales to do, I guess. I mean, customers want to come in when they want to come in to an extent you can get pretty appointment um, oriented in your business, you know, and, yeah. and kind of schedule your day nicely, but it takes a little while to get there. When you start, you're going to be relying on a lot of, you know, fresh leads and, uh, people that just show up at the lot, yeah, right? Yeah. Friends um, and family, and friends and family. I mean, that can be more appointment coordinated because you're talking to them. But when you right. haven't really built a portfolio of business, you will be relying a lot on people just showing up, which means long hours and, and five, six days a week, probably Saturday, Sundays. Uh, no, we don't really. I mean, if a customer wants to come in on Sunday, absolutely, we'll come in on Sunday. That's not a problem. Um, yeah. But um, I mean, we're also here. We try to be as accommodating as we can, because I know that the car business can interfere with your personal lifestyle a lot. So as best we can, we try to accommodate things for people. Right. So like, yeah, I don't know, picking up babies or you need an extra weekend off or whatever it is. Right. I mean, all that kind of stuff do <laughs> as best we can. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, is there anything I shouldn't have asked you, but, or should have asked you, but didn't ask you? Um, I don't know, man. Uh, we <laughs> talked a little bit about the owning the restaurants uh, and you did talk about that. So I don't know. I mean, Oh, uh, I've got a lovely fiance that, that definitely um, wouldn't be getting nearly uh, what we are done if she weren't there working as hard as I am. So yeah. shout out to her. Well, so, <laughs> there you go. What um, uh, what's she doing now that the restaurant's gone? Uh, well, we're like three weeks out of it. So we oh, had okay, a whole bunch so. of stuff to sort out with this other thing that's coming up yeah. and then, you know, getting all our rentals lined up and all that. So she's going to be doing some acting stuff. Uh, she, that's a passion <clears> of her. She's over from Burnaby. So she's getting into that. And a little okay, bit cool. of plays. She'll be at Mamma Mia if anyone wants to go see that in March something. Uh, <laughs> Where's that at? That's gonna be in Courtney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. here. Yes. Or, yeah. 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 It's, it's it's a play. So anyway, she'll be cool. in that, and uh, she's doing as much of that as she can. I think she's trying to get onto a little bit more and building that community in town. So yeah. And does yeah. she does she do you guys do your own property management? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that takes a little bit. That does. Yeah. There's a lot to that too. To yeah, totally. Yeah, and yeah. when you're running your numbers, you probably like it's always smart to throw a little bit aside for that. So when you get to a bigger number. You can make that actual we'll side business, side yeah. business, or hand it off. And yeah, have the, the well, cash flow and actually, still jumping sense. back to your question about you know what do I know about real estate or think people should know about it. Honestly, probably the buying portion of things is less complicated than the managing the tenants portion of things. The legislation is like yeah. thick, and the rules change every couple of years, and it's not always necessarily set up in a way that you would <clears> think <throat> is common sense or necessarily fair. 
Um, I don't know if you've dealt with much. Oh, We've yeah. been very fortunate, but when you read it, you go, ooh, that could not go well. And it's changed. It's yes. changed a lot lately and not to benefit the landlord, to benefit the tenant. Yeah. Which for, for good reason, I think, but it also... There's a case to be made for both. Yeah, I, there, I very much is. believe that. I mean, I, I think that you can't... I think that you there, there should be some encouragement from the government for people to get into landlording because then you've got rental <clears> supply, <throat> but also you can't, you know... You don't want some lords not, not taking people properties out. or pushing yeah. people out or all that stuff. So I, I, I don't know. It's a complicated one. Yeah. We, we leave it to politicians <laughs> and then complain about them. <laughs> the way I was always sort of taught is try to te- treat your tenant like they are an employee almost, like they're one of your salespeople. Okay, yeah. So they're, they're actually running your business for you if you think about yep. it. They're providing that income, so try to treat them like that. Not, yeah, not just, not not just a it. tenant, right? Yeah. So, But with that said, you got to vet your tenants. Like I do criminal record checks, I do credit yeah. checks, yeah. I check the references. You know, yeah. you, you find a lot out about people, out about someone, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. that's important. Credit check for sure. Yeah, well, it's amazing. Some, <clears> like <throat> They even uh, halfway through last year, the they didn't put it into law, but the provincial head of I don't know when you call them housing or rentals or whatever yeah had said that a, that, a, that a credit check was not necessary and it sound yeah no I know I agree it's like, <laughs> okay well you let somebody <coughs> live in the place that you've put all of your money into that could sink you and then we'll talk about whether you want to do a credit check but anyway he backed off that and they decided that it is fair to do which oh because they were going to pull it from doing that he was verbally saying that it wasn't really appropriate to do but they didn't put it into law and then backed off of that when everybody went well come on Right, so, yeah. But I mean, that stuff's scary. I mean, they legislate that you can't even, you know. Well, you think you do a credit check for a car loan, and a car loan's probably not as much as rent. Yes. Yeah. yeah <laughs> right? Yeah, really? Not as valuable as the house either. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. or a lot of things. I mean, doesn't tell us do credit checks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Bell and all that. That's funny. Yeah. yeah so yeah. interesting that they did that. But uh, yeah, I always do credit checks. And it doesn't mean someone's credit always has to be perfect. No. And then if one person's as bad, one person's as good. And sometimes it's good to have someone sort of in the middle because, you know, they're not going to jump ship, go buy a house. Well, yeah. But if it's super tanked and they got a whole bunch of, you know, delinquent credit cards and car payments and stuff, you're, yeah, you're probably not going to rent to them, right? Everybody in the world can make mistakes, but you can get a good sense of character, I think, out of it. Yeah. Right? Be- beyond exactly. the, you know, I think it's always funny when people have references because they've just picked, all right, who's going to say the nicest things about me? <laughs> I'll put that guy on there, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not really a true... Uh, example or, or, or vouch for the actual character of the person. But, yeah, yeah, totally. And you can usually tell when you're talking to people a little bit. You try to use a judgment of character. But yeah. I mean, I had an awesome tenant, the best tenant ever, but he only lasted a year because it was a divorce and he rented and then he went and bought a house a year later, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I knew, I knew he would, but he took care of the house. Got the turnover. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a couple other sort of lighter questions here. If you're stranded on a tropical island and all your basic needs were covered, such as food, water, and clothing, what three things would you like to have with you? I don't know if... Not allowed to say your wife. Oh, damn. I, was say <laughs> I think I think her mic, sorry, he's like, oh, well, I better, I was gonna better say, say my wife and kids. And I was like, no, no, they don't. We'll count them, of course, but... Yeah, yeah, well, I don't, I don't think that she... She might not like it if I drag her to a stranded island. Yeah, okay, so, so no Laurel. Uh, I'll take the dog. Well, she can be there. We'll say she's there. Okay, but okay. other things, like okay, so things that you'd want to Or Reggie, to my dog. Is he, yeah, your dog. He, he's, he's entertainment, so I'd bring him along. Uh, probably, you can probably help you hunt or something too. No, he's lazy. Oh, no. no, no, no. He's more likely to eat the food when I turn around than anything else. <laughs> um, no, Reggie, bring him along. Uh, I mean, food, all that's accounted for. Probably a hammock would be good. And then uh, I want to say a book, but you'd probably get through that pretty quick if you're stranded on yeah. an island. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I guess a big book. I'd, I'd probably have to say a big book of some kind. Yeah. 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 A book on how to do stuff, how to like fires and stuff. There you go. Yeah. yeah <laughs> anything yeah, else? Yeah. Uh, not that I can think of, no. <laughs> a boat to get the yeah, F out of there. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> if you could have dinner with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to say one that's a little bit dark and you're looking for uh, lighter questions, so I apologize. But, oh, well, whatever. But, uh, no, no. but my dad passed away when I was 16. Yeah. So if we're doing mm-hmm. anyone dead or alive, I'd probably sit down, have a dinner, and let him know what he's doing. So, yeah. yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good one for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, if you're a new addition to the crayon box, what color would you be and why? Oh, geez. Uh, oh, man, I don't know. Like a brand new color to the crayon box? What? I thought they had all the colors. Yeah. I think, well, you can make color up if you want. I think right. I, think all, I think this is, I, I take this one as sort of a personality thing. Okay, like, okay. Well, uh, if you're a super straight edge, cut and dry person, you can be like, well, I'd be blue. But if you're maybe a orange personality, you might be like, well, I want to be freaking turquoise with sparkles in it. Uh, well, know, but... <laughs> you know what? Nissan always does interesting colors. So I'll, I'll say Caspian C. Uh, which is the color of the Nissan Micro. 
That's like a, gr- a greenish like, sort of. Yeah, it's like a greenish blue, and uh, I'll I'll say it because it's a plug for my brand. So there you go, nice. plug the Nissan. Yeah. I got a Toyota Corolla rental car right yeah, now. Yeah, I saw. Did you see it? He saw call in. <laughs> it's actually not bad to drive. I miss having a car. Yeah. I got a f- truck, but I don't know. People don't get out of my way and stuff. I said to Tanya, I'm like, how come that person's not moving over? Like, I got yeah. I got no room, and they got lots of room. See it. Yeah. She's like, it's because you're not driving your truck. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, great. Uh, finally, do you have anyone else that you'd recommend I interview? Um, yeah, there's a fellow that uh, actually I, I got talking to a lot when I started doing some real estate stuff. Yeah. Gary is his first name. His last name I can't remember, but I'll shoot him a text. I'll see if he's interested. He's out of Port Alberni. He does a lot of a lot of stuff. Rental House Profits is his company. And uh, What does he do? Like- um, well, he does lots of stuff, but I know that he, for quite some time, it was a lot of... Uh, a lot of real estate investing for long-term buy and hold rentals, but yeah. I mean, essentially, if you're say you've got money sitting in RRSPs, you can invest with them and then get a return on it, kind of thing. Right, like uh, uh what is that called? A riff or whatever. Kind of. Um, yeah. Or uh, I can't remember. Yeah, but so he's done. He's done but it's a it's a investment in real estate within RSP, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I think and it's so, a riff. I think it's a riff. It, it might be, but he's um, <clears throat> I mean, he's basically the guy that'll find the property, manage the property pay you your percentage or whatever it is. And like giant and ventures. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Cool. except on, on a pretty large scale. And he's he yeah. was just a wealth of knowledge. I think I started talking to him last year or year before. Um, and yeah, I'd call him up whenever I had a question, and I'm sure that he got sick of me, but he didn't let on. So yeah. yeah good <laughs> That's good. It's yeah. good to have people that you can ask questions for sure. So my f- buddy from junior high school that I sort of touched base with in Grand Prairie and uh, Fort St. John, he built a portfolio of rental properties, furnished rentals, all joint venture in Grand Prairie. Oh, neat. And he was my first ever sale. Is He's that Aaron? He, yeah, Aaron Belmar. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I was, I, uh, it was going to be between these two guys that I recommended. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. He used to come to a restaurant. So he was my time. first ever yeah. sale in real estate on in uh, Courtney. Yep. I got into real estate. Yeah, great. Then he was actually my first Facebook Live interview as well. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a really good fellow. I, uh, I sat down with him a couple months ago and uh, he used to come to our restaurant all the time. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. He's good yeah. and he's uh, smart. Yeah. I think he's doing 101 unit or something now. Yeah, they're in building Grand, something giant. Prayer, yeah, yeah. it's like lock blocks and all this weird stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. cool. He's a smart yeah. guy. So yeah, this guy'd be good though since I don't know him for sure. Yeah. So shoot him a text and hook me up. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. Yes. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Pleasure to meet everybody. <laughs> Give me a shout out if you can. Yeah, North Island Nissan. Yep.